Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris, and I'm a galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And today I'm so grateful and honored and delighted to be joined by fellow certified quantum soul guidance practitioner, Joshua Little. Welcome, Josh. Thank you. It's so good to be here doing this and having a good old conversation. Uh, yeah, about Vega, about the uh, alpha star from Lyra. So yay. Thank you. So good to be here. Such an honor. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I was inspired. I've been hearing this call to focus on Vega and deepen and share and and see what wants to come through. And I reached out to Josh and, and a synchronicity unfolded, found that he was a very good example of this Vega energy with much to share with us about it. And I will get started sharing a little bit about my relationship to Vega and also help you see if you are connected to Vega Star as well how you can find out how to do that in your astrology chart. All right. And so on the left-hand side of the screen is my galactic astrology chart, which you can calculate on galacticastrochart.com. And this chart will show you all your planets and points. And if you have any alignments to Vega, the chart I have here just shows conjunct and opposites to the constellations and the stars. And if you examine it more closely, you will see that I don't have any conjunctions or oppositions to Vega star and Lyra constellation, which could lead one to mistakenly believe that this wouldn't be an important star for me. And you know, just having this information from this chart, I felt a little bit upset that I wasn't connected to Vega because I really resonated with the frequency and what I began to learn about Vega. So later on, eventually, I also received this helical star and Paran chart on the right hand side of the screen and I saw oh wow I am connected to Vega in my star alignments looking at my natal astrological chart and the moment and the day of my birth through my Venus through my Saturn as well and that these Vega connections are actually manifesting at multiple points in my lifetime the stars rising, really influencing the youth, the upbringing, that period of time leading up to the first Saturn return. I had this Venus aligned with Vega, influencing my development, being a core part of my frequency. The stars in culmination here, the stars of your prime, these are influencing me and whoever is looking at this chart from after that first Saturn return until the next Saturn return. So in your 30s, 40s, 50s, until that next Saturn return. And so it's with Saturn <laughs> for me, which tells me that this is very much part of the nature of my work and my karmic work and my soul mission. With Venus, it's a part of my creativity, my relationships, my divine feminine essence. With Saturn, it's more about my inner authority and really internalizing that vegan mysticism as a way to better express my authentic inner authority in this lifetime. The stars in lower culmination are called the hearthstone of the life. So they are influencing throughout the entire life. They're like your foundation stars. And they're also kind of these stars of legacy, like they can outlive you. They're influencing you always. They're increasing with age. And then they can also be kind of beyond the scope of your human lifetime. So again, I have this Vega in Paran with Saturn. 
And if you want to calculate a helical star and Paran chart like this, I will list the instructions for how to do so for free in the description. You can make a chart like this on astro.com. And so I also just want to add too that let's say you make a galactic astro chart and you make a Paran chart you feel a Vega connection, but the Vega star is not there. That still doesn't mean you're not connected to it. You can be connected to it on a soul level. It's not coming through. And maybe these ways we're looking at the stars, but you absolutely can still be connected to those stars. I would say in particular, if you have alignments to galactic points in your galactic astro chart, and just if you have that connection in your heart and you know it's true for you to definitely trust that. So a little bit about some of the meanings of what that may entail. I have pictures here of the Lyra constellation here, the harp, this beautiful musical instrument and how it used to be depicted actually being held in the vulture's beak. Mm -hmm. And some interpretations here from star and planet combinations, Bernadette Brady, about how this can express and manifest. And I find that it's true. <laughs> they do resonate. But as I was also saying, I'm seeing the Venus expressing through my creativity, my relationships. It was just flowing through me as a child, this vegan interest. And then it seems to have intensified after my first Saturn return, as I actually spent time in India and spent time in Tibetan shamanism, spent time in these earth human versions of the vegan mysticism. So it's something that's definitely just ripened for me with age. And I'm still learning all about it, as well as I learn more of the galactic component too, and have even the ancient and future timelines of the Vegans connecting with me in my Reiki practice now. So yeah, I'm going to stop the, mm -hmm. the share here. Wow, that is just so wonderful to hear about your, yeah, your connections. And I love how you knew that you had a connection to the Vegas star, yet it wasn't there on your galactic astrology. And obviously, as you've continued to develop and delve into this world of fixed star astrology, you found the helical system and Quran's has kind of gone, here you go. <laughs> and you're like, yes, this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but <clears throat> like you say it's not always a way you can still have these connections yet they don't always show up but you just know in your heart and your soul um that you resonate and so for me i i have my son conjuncting vega uh 16 degrees of capricorn in the third house uh, i also have a trine um, and this is my galactic astrology with uh, the geocentric Western um, uh, astrology chart. I also have a trine to Vega uh, in my Pluto in Scorpio at, I think it's 14 degrees uh, in my first house. And I have a sextile in my part of fortune in Scorpio in my first house. And of course, you can get your galactic astrology chart done at galacticastrologychart.com uh, to find out where it might be for you. But yeah, I guess it just shows that this is um, a star and uh, an expression of consciousness uh, and a resonance that is, you know, really ancient for me because uh, it goes back to, um, you know, to my Pluto placement, which shows uh, my kind of first um, incarnations in this galaxy. So um, back when, you know, the uh, the beautiful Lyran systems and, you know, the founding kind of um, 
beings were coming into Lyra to create them. I think I was there in um, in Vega. Uh, so, but I've spent a lot of time, and of course, it's my most recent incarnation there as well, with it being conjuncting my son. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I have my galactic astrology reading done, it was said that I um, I was incarnated there previous to this incarnation in uh, the Adari race. And the Adari race within Elena Danan's Gift from the Stars book, which uh, talks about many different extraterrestrial races, um, they're, they're known as the, the, um, the kind of the Vedic gods who came to earth um and the kind of the blue the blue gods <laughs> and um and set up a lot of that kind of vedic uh way of being and brought a lot of vegan mysticism to earth and to those cultures around the east um i'm not sure whether i incarnated here as part of them or you know kind of came down uh to bring the the vegan mysticism way uh that uh, that my soul hasn't kind of answered that question yet and um and that's cool um but yeah i was also there incarnated as that race in vega before this incarnation and i put my body there into stasis so that i could come down here as a soul and volunteer and be incarnated in this physical body as josh um so yeah that was <laughs> really interesting to to learn about when I have my galactic astrology reading done and um I think you know as I've delved into Lisa Royal Holt's work um and read the prism of Lyra you know I've learned a lot about the vegan um the vegan way that kind of expression of consciousness and it just resonates with who I've been you know my whole life who I've been in my kind of son I um you know that they're, they're priests and priestesses mm -hmm. and, um <clears throat> I've always had such a strong connection to the divine and growing up this was through Christianity and a relationship with Jesus but I always had a more of like a source connection uh, rather than, you know, kind of um, <laughs> as I've kind of expanded my awareness, I've found that there are other kind of deities and influences uh, through the G G Judeo-Christianity, um, you know, as part of the Anunnaki line. And, uh, you know, I didn't really resonate with a lot of the more religious uh, side of things, um, but resonated with just like the spirit of like Christ and that kind of devotion to the divine um, in just like, you know, in, in every part of my life um <clears throat> i've also you know one of their kind of shadow traits can be to to kind of sacrifice themselves and be a bit of a martyr and um you know i think you could even look at me kind of choosing to kind of incarnate here when I've come from Vega, which is a beautiful kind of more heavenly frequency and consciousness and, you know, coming to a planet where there's, you know, a lot of conflict and um, just a lot of issues and a very different expression of consciousness here, you could see that as being a bit of a martyr <laughs> in and of itself, kind of being one of the three waves of volunteers. Um, and it is, <laughs> it yeah. is. You know, and I think I think a lot of the time the the vegans think, you know, it's okay because even though I'm going to go there and I'm going to really struggle with this, um, you know, some of this consciousness here, it, it allows me to expand into more acceptance and more love and more compassion for all these different experiences. And I think on a kind of soul level, they have these kind of Messiah complexes and these savior complexes where they're like, ah, you know, this is so separated from source and something <laughs> needs to be done about this, you know? So they kind of go, oh, right, I'm going to take 
on some of what you're going through and they might do this through the ancestral line the dna or you know their inv um, immediate environment to try and ensure that the environment can operate in a much more divine expression which you know it can be it's a little bit self-serving in a way it's a little bit selfish um it's also extremely uh, sacrificial as well because they're kind of taking on other people's issues and being like this empath that is very dysfunctional um, so that you know other people are kind of going through a much easier experience and the kind of collective as a whole that they're around whether that be the family or um, you know the company that they're kind of with are able to operate in more of a kind of divine way and you know they'll they'll give parts of themselves and their consciousness and they're like okay this angel that's part of me it's okay it can go there it can be with you it can help you during this kind of like journey that you're on so that you know you, you're okay and it will take you back to source because everything is about divine devotion and connection and source connection for the vegans and they just you know they they know and they have such a connection to that state of consciousness that they know that everything is going to return back there but <laughs> they get a bit impatient <laughs> uh they get oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> excited as well about you know the ability to help people out and go oh i've been through that journey before i know what you're going through here here's that part of my consciousness that knows how to get you there but at the same time they're the disabling themselves mm -hmm. you know it's it can be really disabling because they're missing the fragments of who they are they're missing parts of their soul and so even though there is this you know, this ability to, um, to kind of bring unconditional love and to really be of like service to others, even though it might be a little dysfunctional, there's a real importance that they have an equal amount of self-love because if they don't really truly love themselves, as much as there are, you know, kind of expanding into more love with others, it can, it can be quite uh, debilitating because they can lose a lot of their own, you know, source and their own soul in the process of this kind of self-sacrifice for the sake of, you know, the potential of oneness that um, that we can come into as a galaxy, as a universe. And, uh, yeah, so that's been a big part of my journey. And, you know, um, I think as well, as I as I connect to source, I always go through my higher self and, you know, I, I kind of tune into the aspect of me multiple times a day. Um, and I, you know, and I kind of have conversations. Okay, what's going on? <laughs> what was that dream about last night? <laughs> um, you know, and I'm just kind of working with whatever's present and whatever is uh, is kind of shown to me. And uh, this morning, for example, um, uh, past lives came up from Sirius B, uh, who also have a lot of this kind of self-sacrifice and, you know, the savior complex, uh, especially for humanity. Um, and past lives from there were coming up where I volunteered to go into Orion and um, and try to kind of bring um, treaties of peace and diplomacy from Sirius um, with certain races, which didn't go very well at all, which I knew was the potential. Um, <clears throat> and I just got enslaved and I got put into their systems and went through all kinds of traumas. And I was there kind of, you know, reliving some of these memories and just like working through it with love and and uh, kind of dealing with the, the karma involved with the relationships uh, in my life that are connected to, to those past lives. And um, yeah, and and I think that's that's sometimes what it's like with this expression in its shadow <laughs> it you know it's a bit like they go on suicide missions kind of knowing that there is a potential for things not to go well but they hope that in that process and they see a wisdom 
where there is a potential for things to end up working out the more that they kind of try <laughs> to kind of bring more peace and harmony uh, across this galaxy, um, to bring more source oneness amongst everyone. Um, and I think that's that's kind of like the heart <laughs> of a lot of this vegan way. Um, and it's not always easy, but it's... It's kind of, I don't know, it's, there's a wisdom to it. And there's a, like a real devotion to the divine um, that kind of fuels it. And the hope <laughs> of, of, of things coming into more balance and love. Um, but I think during that process what i am finding is in order to create the boundaries that i need to create so i'm not really debilitating myself in the process of you know this kind of savior complex or messiah complex this self-sacrifice i just really need to pursue self-love <laughs> as much as the love and the hope for you know heaven to kind of be more of our existence here on earth um, so that's kind of, yeah, my journey with it. I also, um, because I know they're very connected to sound as well and music. It's obviously the star very connected to music, sound. And, um, and I was a singer, uh, for, you know, 10 years professionally. Um, and I also, uh, sang in my like church, uh, from like, you know, 11, 12 years old, um, and that was always kind of my way of connecting to the divine and songwriting and writing these love songs to God. And um, it was just it's just always been my way of like really tuning in um, and just allowing for songs to kind of flow out of me. And even in my quantum soul guidance sessions, I allow like the song of the soul to kind of flow through me um, and I sing it and record it for people um, so that I can, you know, and I just hear the music from their soul and these different melodies and yeah, it's all kinds of great <laughs> feedback and stuff. So I think that's another fun way in which my soul likes to express this, um, yeah, this vegan uh, consciousness. So that's a little bit about my own uh, experience and journey uh, with Vegas so far, but I'd love to know more about yours and what it looks like, um, you know, in your Venus and, and Saturn even, and how that yeah. kind of correspond, corresponds to your, to your life. Yeah. Oh, there's so many aha moments listening to your experience. And yeah, I had a question about, it sounds like you are in communication with that aspect of yourself that's in stasis in Vega, like on an ongoing basis. Is that right? Um, Able to contact them or no? Well, they, no, I don't, I've not personally contacted them because what, what I've, what I've sensed is that they're, they're not kind of active. Mm. I don't, I'm not sure. What, what do you think? What do you sense? I would just be interested to, <laughs> to yeah. know. Yeah. Like, I'm just curious about it. I'm genuinely curious if, yeah, like that. Yeah. If, if that's possible in your own deep journey states to like unify, you know, with that part and like communicate, channel that part, you know, um, receive guidance for yourself or receive like information about yeah, like what that part, what timeline it's on, you know, like when, yeah. when are you, <laughs> when are you exactly? <laughs> well, I feel like it's yeah. with me here. Yeah. I feel like that, like part of my soul journey is like come and kind of been a part of my expression and more uh, and more my embodiment. And, you know, I know that there's a real, Obviously, they love their spiritual technologies and tools and, you know, crystals and pendulums and, you know, all these kinds of 
instruments and uh, tools that we can use for, um, you know, for our own connection to source really have been a part of my journey. Um, and I think that that part of me really loves to kind of play with different tools and technologies and explore that as well. Um, I also, uh, you know, I, I went to India as well and did my yoga teacher training out there in 2016. And, um, and I really connected to that part of me there. It was just a joy filled, you know, experience. And I love practicing yoga, especially with others. I love doing it in groups. Um, and yeah, that's just like, one of my favorite things to do um and i you know i've I've taught over the years as well um so that's been another part of the vegan kind of aspects of my consciousness and how it really lives out here as well um on more of like a kind of practical you know that kind of the the vegan mysticism and the practice and i have three guides from uh from vega as well um i call them like my high council they they're like these three really wise kind of peaceful um but they're not the adari race i believe they're the osman race who are a humanoid race there um and uh they're just very wise very peaceful and i've been connecting in with them as i've been preparing for this and just you know just kind of like be with me you know just kind of help me <laughs> kind of find the right things to share and say um yeah um mm. yeah I, I think i understand now it's like literally i just yeah <laughs> my mind needed a moment i guess to like catch up that it's like your body in stasis and yes. like the the more conscious part of you all of that energy is here present and you know joshua little like in your life and all of that like that is that is just wild that's really cool i mean that's friends like that's an example of the amazing things you can kind of feel into like through galactic astrology and through the soul records and through the journey to find that out and yeah have that connect i think that's so so interesting that that could be how how it's playing out so mm -hmm. yeah cool to hear about that and I love what you said about well I wrote down a journey of self-love that that's really kind of the antidote to the the self-sacrificial martyr messiah complex thing I've definitely <laughs> dealt with that myself too and like I attributed it more so i have my pluto aligned with crux the cross mm -hmm. which also carries that kind of energy and was raised within like a catholic framework and and yeah always as a little girl was feeling like how you know i need to be my perfect self like what would perfect taylor do and like to mm -hmm. fix and you know fixing things i perceived that needed fixing you know whether or not that was true or false or distorted or anything but yeah living with that that self-sacrifice that martyr archetype and needing really to heal that quite a lot in you know along over the course of my spiritual journey, my spiritual path, and a lot of that started coming up in my college years, more into my awareness, and then in 2012 really like clicked in for me. I was guided actually to adopt a vegan diet, which is so funny <laughs> looking back, like people miss uh, pronouncing the word vegan, like vegan diet is usually said vegan diet, right? But a lot of people are like, are you vegan? A vegan diet? <laughs> and now looking back, I'm like, that's so funny because I didn't even know about like vega and like the vegans and all of this. So yeah, I was literally, you know, guided to become more conscious of what I was eating and like what actually felt good for my energy system and to stick with it and that really 
facilitated my own spiritual expansion, like cleansing and purifying my body and understanding the ways that I was not treating myself with love. And yeah, that that led me also around the same time to yoga. Yoga practices actually began yoga asana practice in high school, like in my teen years. And stuck with it always through, you know, to this day, I do asanas every day. I practice the asanas. I love them. Went to India. I actually, I started two yoga teacher trainings in the States, but I was like, I want the authentic experience. Like I could not settle for anything less. Mm -hmm. And I did a training, I received a training at a proper ashram and it just, it felt so natural and wonderful to me to be there. The lifestyle, I was just like, I could stay here forever and live this way. And my guides were like, Taylor, you have, <laughs> you know, <laughs> done this before many lifetimes as a yogi on the earth. And, and then eventually learning about more of my galactic connection, seeing seeing that trace through my connections to Sirius and Orion and Vega and yeah, many others. So Hydra even, um, pretty much all over the Milky Way galaxy, right? Is this Vega mysticism. It's a bit omnipresent. So I really, really connect with those practices and that discipline aspect mm -hmm. was helpful for me learning how to not sacrifice myself to be practicing discipline in service of self-love and self-care and nourishment and filling my cup. And I'm now post Saturn return. It was like, I am, I'm very good with discipline. <laughs> I'm very good now. It's like one of my, one of my uh, my strengths and my skills, but yeah, that self sacrifice piece has been tough. And what's really helped me on my journey in healing it is Reiki and Holy Fire Reiki specifically, which heals religious trauma. Wow, has been yeah the thread that really really was showing that to me, healing the religious trauma and the conditioning of that, the distortions of certain aspects of vegan mysticism and other spiritual paths that, you know, had significant thought forms and belief systems and, you know, energetics within my body and in my field and in my patterning to release those. And I see them also releasing from clients and people I get to work with. And many people report positive results with holy fire Reiki for that religious trauma. But I've, I've seen it so many times in sessions with so many light workers, and then come to find out they are connected to Vega. I'm like, oh, this is or crux. Yeah, um, yeah or crux or both. And and seeing seeing imprints of that martyr archetype, even like the cross on the back and like things on the back side of the body in the energy field indicating that that burden and needing to release it and that we have the opportunity to release and let go of that and choose more love and ease and learn ways to work with my empathy because that was that's been part of my journey as well being extremely empathic you know, growing up not knowing where my energy ended and somebody else's began, my emotions, their emotions, it was just their emotions and like no space for me to even have awareness of the emotions that I was having. And yeah, not even being aware that that was happening. <laughs> so learning about my empathy and how to like dial it down, turn it on off, navigate and what I need on like a consistent basis to really honor my empathic nature and use it in a way where it doesn't sabotage me or yeah, just disintegrate me or 
anything like that where it's it can be used in a, a beautiful and a helpful way and it's not on full blast all the time and I also use my discipline to like not tune in <laughs> where I know not to tune in <laughs> so, yeah I just I can't do that so yeah uh, the the vegan a lot of the vegan mysteries were coming through or memories were coming through a lot last year and I've had mostly memories connected to earth connected to India connected to Tibet I spent time significant time in Tibetan Buddhist monastery as well as meditation center mm -hmm. uh, cooking vegan food and practicing there the meditation and the chanting and the all the practices the ritual the schedule the daily schedule and living like a monastic I, I thought that was my path in this life I was like oh I'm gonna be a Buddhist nun Tibetan Buddhist nun this is yeah this is my my next step and the biggest thing I had trouble there was not like the precepts they make you take, but that I couldn't eat what I wanted <laughs> when I wanted. Like <laughs> they didn't let you have like the dietary preferences and schedule that you want because you're working with your preferences and like letting go of all of that. And I was like, look, guys, like my body is too sensitive for what you serve, <laughs> you know? But there, there were other things. I say like casually that that's like the reason I left. It's not. There were there were other. There was like a, a guru complex kind of thing that was not not resonating. It was like not this lifetime, not healthy, and also receiving the information that in this life, like it's not about that. I'm meant to be out in the world as you know a lay person. I can. I can still tend myself like with that inner monastery and and practice my life in that ritual way, in that ceremonial way, in that sacred temple, sacred sanctuary kind of way, spiritually devoted and committed life. And it doesn't have to be like we're stepping into new paradigms of like what that looks like, like what it, that it doesn't have to be secluded and sequestered to ashrams or monasteries or spiritual communities it's like your everyday person in the world and all the different occupations and vocations and yeah so not yeah. this lifetime <laughs> completely i i think there's you know there's just source in all and sources in all anyway you know and it's it's almost like the integration of the polarities within it all anyway that we're doing and it's you know it, it's like part of the choice of coming here to earth is just learning to really accept this whole experience this whole you know just what is here what what this life is about this physical body this you know this world these systems it's like i think being in resistance to anything is just causing more suffering um so the more we can just like allow and accept and just be here in the world <laughs> you know especially as the second wave is that's just like the purpose you know it's just to be um and to just allow our being to be enough <laughs> it's like we don't need to kind of prove um in any way to the divine you know by having a certain kind of um you know, ritualistic way of doing things that is kind of built out of that kind of religious programming. It's like, no, the divine, the spirit is within every experience and we all come from source anyway. <laughs> so even though, you know, many might have forgotten that connection and they might, you know, have other experiences as part of their soul to, to go through that they've chosen to go through, um, you know, the, it doesn't mean that they, they're not from source and that's who they are. And it's just about like honing in on, okay, where do I want to connect to 
this person, you know, from what kind of frequency I want to connect to them within, you know, that kind of divine expression and just like connect people from that place because, um, ah, it's just beautiful <laughs> and it's, you know, and it's possible as well with anyone and everyone. Um, you know, I, yeah, yeah, I think it's possible. So I totally know what you mean about, I've said to myself, I'm, I'm here to be a monk, you know, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I still, I feel like, but I still feel like I'm married to God uh, every day. I still feel like I'm in this kind of real deep, intimate relationship with the divine. I feel like you know, I'm, I just have like this natural obedience anyway in, you know, in life. And um, sometimes that obedience doesn't always, sometimes that obedience is doing something that is self-sacrificing for the mm -hmm. sake of expansion into more love, you know. Um yeah, because it allows us to expand into more self-love and kind of go, oh, no, not that again, <laughs> because we've experienced it and we've learned from it. Uh, but it also means that we can expand into more unconditional love for others and universal love in the process as well. And, um, and I think that's just like the heart of like the priest and the priestess is so pastoral. It's so you know caring and um gracious and merciful and compassionate and it just wants to like meet people where they're at and just just like show up in love <laughs> just be that love for self and for them and um and that's that's enough you know, I think sometimes it might feel like it's not enough and I need to go do this and do that. And um, yeah, but just being, just being in the, in the light. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's enough. <laughs> valuing, valuing the beingness. I mean, that was such a core teaching of the, my time in the monastery and in so much meditation practice was like valuing that being, valuing that as equal to all of the doing and all of that, that we're being first. <laughs> and that's, and that's very good. <laughs> and that's quite a contribution and, and having the doing emanate from like a centered, valued, grounded being uh has been is the work is a, a key part of the work and allowing oneself to be as well learning how to do that mm -hmm. and and again value that and hold space for that mm -hmm. yeah in this world of doing 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 and that's all we do is do and, and that's all that's valuable is doing <laughs> not not the full story I also wrote down earn it versus grace, like this program of like, we need to earn, we need to obey, obey the God, or we need to earn the result or earn whatever, earn God's love or earn love. And it's like, what I've been learning is like, it's, it's given how to, how to receive, receive the grace, receive the love. And yeah, it's a, to understand too that it's not contingent on all of my practices and preparations and rituals and I have to be a certain amount purified and cleansed and imperfect and, and all of this that it it can be received through grace all the time regardless of all that all of those other things I mentioned can enhance my experience and my perception of the receiving of the grace of the receiving of that connection, deepening my experience and my perception of that, but it's by no means required. 
So that's kind of been a, a huge lesson too, is like, I love all the cleansing and the purification and the, you know, inner temple tending so that my perception of that experience of source and my connection is as open and colorful and real and vital as, you know, physical reality. You know, it's like that inner reality for me really comes alive. Um when I set myself up for it and it can even come alive when I'm not perfect in setting myself up for it too. And, you know, honoring that as well. So, yeah. I love, I love what you just said. You're so right. It is about receiving it all first so that you can then just be the, the flow of it. And it is, it's, you know, Vega is the, the feminine principle and it is kind of more of this internal introverted mm -hmm. journey kind of tending to your own garden and making sure that like you're in this place of um or not <laughs> just kind of being with where you're at actually is enough and just showing up for yourself and connecting to yourself i think that in in and of itself is very loving um and it's just like mm -hmm. that is a great start to then allow whatever wants to flow within the action and the more masculine principle of doing to kind of flow from that place of, you know, ensuring that it's, it's coming from our heart. It's coming from, from our center. It's coming from us. We're living for us. <laughs> We're living for ourselves. We're not living for other others. Um, and what others want from us, um, which can often be the case, especially when you're so empathic. Um, yeah, there's another thing that I, I just, I just love celebrating and being in a place of like celebration, and you know, I think that's just a big part of like ceremony. <laughs> it's just like people, you know, when when you know gatherings happen. Um, spiritually we're usually kind of coming together to celebrate you know the expression of spirit and consciousness within us and within everything and and i think we can practice that kind of celebration of everything that's happening for us as well celebrating ourselves and just mm. who we are <laughs> celebrating all the amazing parts of us um celebrating the parts of us that we're afraid of celebrating you know what we might have uh, have achieved you know as part of our own expression of success um and just being in that kind of celebratory ceremony of life you know imagine living in that kind of expression uh where life just becomes the ceremonial expression uh, celebration <laughs> that is just constantly happening because we're choosing to kind of live within that frame of, of consciousness of celebrating everything so life becomes a party <laughs> you know and uh and i think that's when we can really really enjoy this this whole experience here is kind of you know perhaps moving out of um a place of like i can't accept <laughs> what's going on here so i'm gonna try and change it and go through you know be the martyr and sacrifice myself to try and make this better and kind of going no i'm just gonna stay in a field of like celebration of all that is spirit all that is source all that all that is uh happening here and um and living from that place to just allow life to be the most enjoyable fun party that it can be um i think that's like a real uh kind of future or you know um a, like a higher consciousness expression of this vegan um path 
and uh, and how it can be expressed because i think from that place as well there's a lot of freedom that happens there's a lot of you know we just feel free of any kind of baggage of any of that heavy responsibility any of that kind of negative karmic stuff and just go no i'm living here <laughs> i'm living from this like celebratory experience of like spirit in me in everything and then that becomes more of the experience and brings more of that frequency into this collective consciousness here on earth as well. Yeah. That's so beautiful. <laughs> I love that. The celebration, like that, that can be the alchemy and the higher expression, the pure expression of this vegan, enlightened vegan energy. That is, that is so beautiful. I love that. That's, that's so much lighter. <laughs> I know. After kind of going on, I kind of started things off when it was like heavy shadow. This is kind of yeah. uh, got to this place oh. where, yeah, Phew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That feels really right. That feels yeah, really good. The celebration of these next these next chapters and next moments and the evolutionary cycle we're in and you know our our human part in this whole evolution of consciousness celebrating celebrating life and celebrating humanity and celebrating self-love and celebrating creation and unconditional love and all of these higher frequencies that's so beautiful love it celebrating you celebrating this time together it's just so good thank you yeah yeah perfect way to end this conversation i think with the the celebration energy yeah well thank you so much josh for everything you shared thank you everybody please let us know in the comments how do you connect with the vegan energy we're curious we'd love to know and all the details for how to find each of us will be listed in the description box below. Please feel free to connect and thanks so much for tuning in. Aloha. Bye.